Hello and welcome to the American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Media Day. I'm Bob Picozzi, and today we are coming your way from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. This will be the site of the first American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship, March 7th through the 10th. Today we're going to tell you all about the inaugural year of the American. We'll preview the season. We will also release the preseason conference poll, the preseason player of the year, freshman of the year, and the preseason all-conference team. And we will also chat with the coaches and players from all 10 conference members. And speaking of those 10 members, the American is comprised of five schools who played last season in the Big East. Cincinnati, Connecticut, Louisville, Rutgers, and USF, the University of South Florida. Four schools who come from Conference USA, Houston, Memphis, SMU, and UCF, that's the University of Central Florida, and one school who comes from the Atlantic 10, Temple. And looking ahead, the American will welcome three new members in the 2014-15 academic year, all three coming from Conference USA, East Carolina, Tulane, and Tulsa. Now, the American not only features UConn, the defending national champion, but also Louisville, the school which lost to UConn in the national championship game last April. USF also played in the NCAA tournament last March, and Memphis and SMU played in the WNIT. There are two coaches in the conference who are members of the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, UConn's Gino Auriemma and Rutgers' C. Vivian Stringer. The Americans' preseason poll was announced today. UConn is number one, receiving nine of ten first place votes. Louisville is number two, receiving the remaining first place vote. Then USF is third, Rutgers is fourth, SMU fifth, Memphis sixth, Cincinnati seventh, UCF eighth. Preseason player of the year, Rutgers guard Tyler Scaife is the preseason freshman of the year. And the preseason all-conference team looks like this. Three players from Connecticut, Brianna Stewart, senior center Stephanie Dolson, and junior forward Kalina Mosqueda lewis Three players from Louisville, senior guards Shoni Schimmel and Antonita Slaughter, and junior forward Sarah Hammond, UCF sophomore guard Brianna Jackson, Cincinnati senior guard Daisha Hollins, SMU senior guard Kina Mays, and USF senior guard Inka Orakova. And two other players have been named preseason all-conference honorable mention. UConn senior guard Bria Hartley and Rutgers junior wing Banaja Laney. The Louisville Cardinals are second in the American Athletic Conference preseason poll, receiving one of the ten first place votes. They went 29 and 9 last season, finished in a three-way tie for third place in the Big East at 11 and 5, lost to Notre Dame in the semifinals of the Big East Women's Championship. But in the NCAA tournament, the Cardinals had a magical run. They defeated Middle Tennessee State, Purdue. In the Sweet 16, they stunned the number one seed Baylor, and then in the Elite Eight, knocked off Tennessee. On to the Final Four, they beat Cal before losing to UConn in the NCAA championship game. Now, Louisville returns three preseason All-American Conference selections, 5'9 senior guard Shoni Schimmel, 6'1 senior wing Antonita Slaughter, and 6'2 junior forward Sarah Hammond. The Cardinals' newcomers include 6'1 forward Imana Henderson, 5'9 guard Janelle Cannon, and 5'6 guard Star Breedlove. This is Jeff Walls' seventh year as the coach at Louisville. He has taken the Cardinals to five NCAA tournaments and two appearances in the national championship game. Well, we're joined by uh, two familiar faces. To my left, uh, Louisville coach uh, Jeff Walls, and to my right is uh, UConn coach Gino Ariama. First of all, did you win any money since you got here today? No. Um, I Actually, uh, I, I don't know the last time I, I, uh, I played blackjack here. It's been a long, long time. Um, and um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't trust my, uh, I don't trust my luck in the offseason. I want to try to save it all for during the season. And uh, Jeff is, uh, I don't know if you know this, there are a lot of restaurants in this facility, and he owns one of them. Did you, did you patronize it? No, you know, we, I went and had the opportunity to see his cafe or his court. Right. Gino's court, and right. I just can't believe he didn't send us all a voucher up for a free hot dog and soda as we're here. But it, it, ne it never came in the mail. Your short arms? Yeah, you know, um, this is the big time now. This isn't, uh, you know, this isn't the South. And, and this is last year in, 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 in the Big East. In, well, actually, I should say in the American now. Uh, all the Big East schools that are, that are leaving, they're the last ones to leave, them and Rutgers. Um, and I told him earlier, um, the contract that he signed at the end of the year, 
I know that cost Patino a lot of money because <laughs> he had to give up some of his for Jeff. Now, I, I'm looking at how you're dressed and how you're, one, one of you two didn't get the right memo of it. Well, you know, it, it, it's all who, who looks good and what. Yeah, you, you know, he has to try extremely hard to look good. It's mm -hmm. not too hard for me. <laughs> so he, he, he's, he's got to dress to the nines. Yep. Now, um, yep. last time you saw this guy, <laughs> uh, at least on the court, it was in the, in the national championship game. And, uh, and that really was a proud moment for the conference and, and an unbelievable weekend for the University of Louisville, by the way, because right. their men's team was winning the national championship. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what, it was, what it's like, uh, and it's happened to you twice now, that you meet a, uh, a conference opponent in the national championship game? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I mean, if, if somebody would have said, uh, you know, 10 years ago that, you know, we would be playing uh, in, in the NCAA championship game, I would have said, yeah, I can, I can understand that because that's kind of where our program is uh, and has been the last 10 years. If you told me we were going to play against Louisville both times, I would have said, I don't know that anyone expected that. I don't know that anyone thought when Jeff got the job at Louisville that in that short a period of time, really, and it hasn't been a long period of time, that not only would they be in one national championship game, but in, in two, um, you know, I, I would say the last 10 years, I don't think anybody's done a better job um, anywhere in the country of, of, of coaching their team and building their program. Um, and I'm going to be sorry to see them go, you know, for a lot of reasons. But um, I, I think the competitive rivalry that, that was starting to build um, over the last couple of years was something that was going to become pretty special, and I'm, I kind of hate to see that go. It was uh, not a bad uh, winter or, uh, and fall and early spring for the University of Louisville. The, uh, the football team shared the Big East Championship, went on and won in the, in the Sugar Bowl. And on that same magical weekend, you, you guys almost pulled off something that, you know, that UConn did in 2004 when both the men and the women won the championship in the same year. The Louisville men won it all, and you guys got to the finals and lost to uh, the team coached by the man next to me. Uh, what was it like to be on the Louisville campus uh, la last March and April to go through that? Well, it was really exciting. You know, you uh, sit there and just look at all the sports and what uh, we've been able to uh, accomplish. We compete with each other. You know, our football team started it uh, with, with, with their great run uh, that they made. Uh, then to go on and play in the, B the, the BCS game and, and perform as well as they did against uh, uh, Florida. And then you've got our men's team, you know, our baseball team, our softball program, everybody. We're, we're all out there supporting each other, and it's just – it's fun to have as many programs be as successful as as we have. Last year, uh, your your team was not expected to win at all because Baylor had Brittany Griner and, and it looked like no one was ever going to beat them. And of course, this man next to me, his his team knocked him off in the in the Sweet 16. This year, it's different, and I think most everybody expects your team to win the national championship, based on the fact that you did it last year and who you have coming back is it uh, and you've been in this situation before but is, is it NCAA title or bust at UConn this year I mean the, the, <clears throat> the world that we live in up here um, it, it's like that every year uh, some years it's more realistic than others though that's that's the only part that I hold on to um, you know I'm the first one to say hey I think we have the best team and I think we have a great chance to win it and I also like I said last year we don't have the best team and we need to get lucky uh, we need to get a couple breaks, and then you know maybe we do have a chance. And um, I, I, I've been on both sides of that. Uh, I know when we have the best team, and we have a, a better than average chance of winning it. And going into this season with everybody that we have back, and uh, you know hopefully we stay healthy. Uh, I wouldn't trade my team for anybody else's. Let's put it that way. Um, I, I don't know though that. Um, the expectations are any different from everyone else. You know, our expectations are, are, are to be in the Final Four. What happens after that, you can't predict. But I like our chances, absolutely. What was, uh, what was your gut reaction when you heard last uh, Easter Sunday night that, uh, that Louisville had knocked off Baylor, which again was uh, a team that I know you hoped that you would bump into in the Final Four? Well, when I, <clears throat> when I watched 
parts of the game when I saw the game. Um, I, it just looked like they were going to win the whole game. I mean, it never, it never looked like Baylor was going to win the game. You know, sometimes teams come out of nowhere and they win, you know, at the end in heartbreaking fashion or something like that for the other team, for the favorite. But it looked like from the opening tap that Louisville was going to win because they were better prepared, they played harder, they, they executed better when they had to. Uh, they did everything that a team is supposed to do to get to the Final Four. So it was never, uh, man, I can't believe how lucky they got or I can't believe how bad Baylor played. Um, it was just, you know, Louisville playing the perfect game that they had to play in order to beat a team like that. And they did. And that's what the NCAA tournament's all about, though. That's why, you know, you can't say, well, you're guaranteed to win it or, uh, you know, you're ordained to win it because you have everybody back. Baylor had everybody back last year, and they didn't win it. So they didn't win it because they got beat. I don't think they lost. I think they just got flat out beat. When you sit down to prepare to play against a Baylor team that, as Gino said, was loaded, I mean, they were a lot more than just Brittany Griner, but in Brittany Griner, they had this force in the middle that I don't think the women's college basketball game has ever, has ever seen before. When you drew up your game plan, uh, did you really think you could knock them off? I mean, what, what, what was your mentality about what do we have to do to make this close so that maybe we can steal it at the end? Well, when we went into the game, I mean, of course, you're, you're going into every game with, with a plan. And, you know, we, I've watched enough film of, of teams that try to throw the ball in the post, and they, they, try, they try to make a post move on Brittany, and she blocks it. I mean, she's an all-time leading shot blocker. So when we had our four or five days prepare, all we talked about was we're shooting threes. We're, we're going to drive and kick, dri drive and kick, and we knew we we're, were going to have, have to make a lot. And uh, it was just a situation where, you know, and we've all been in those games where, Two or three players start to make shots, and then all of a sudden everybody thinks they're they're, they're three-point shooters. You know, I've got Sarah Hammond hit, hitting a step back three in the corner over Brittany, and it looked like that's something she had practiced. So, you know, when, when players start to believe in what you're doing, they start believing in themselves. We did feel, you know, like, hey, we can win this game. And then when you come out and you start executing it, as Gino said, I mean, we we felt that we were in complete control. And then towards the end there. It, it was slipping away, but you know we have a, a fifth-year senior step up and make two, two free throws, and it was a situation where if we had lost, I was almost would have thought it was an, uh, an upset that night because we got beat because we had controlled that entire game. Brianna Stewart was named uh, today the uh, American Athletic Conference preseason player of the year. She was widely considered the best player in high school uh, coming out of her senior year, and. You and I chatted last year, and I, I know it's your feeling that it's it's more difficult for big kids to make the transition immediately to college basketball than it is uh, perimeter players. And uh, it took a while, but but you know when once she got to the NCAA tournament, she just uh, broke out and blossomed into everything that uh, I'm sure you and and everyone who had seen her before thought she would be. Uh, j just how good is she? And uh, do, you, do you think she's the uh, the best player in the country going into this year? Um. It's, it's always hard to, to say uh, how kids are going to develop, you know. Somebody comes out of high school and they're a really good player. Uh, sometimes it's easy like a guard, like Shoni Schimmel. She comes out of high school, she goes to Louisville, she shoots it every time she touches it. <laughs> you know, so if you're on her team and you're a big guy, you're depending on her passing it to you. And guards, it's easy for guards. They come out of high school. They dribble the ball up the floor, and if they feel like shooting it, they shoot it. If they feel like passing it, they pass it. <laughs> so you can have a great freshman year, a great sophomore year when you're a guard because you control the ball. You get to do whatever you want. And then as you get older as a guard, I think you start to understand that what makes you a great guard, like what Shoney's done, is you start passing the ball to people, and you make them better. And because you make them better, you and your team get better. Well, big kids don't have that luxury. When big kids come to college, they're dependent on people giving them the ball, and they're also getting their ass beat by other big kids, which will be the first time that's ever happened. So for big kids to come to college and really play well early in their career is really, really, really hard. And it takes all of them a long time. You know? and, and for Brianna Stewart, not only is she 6'3 you know, or whatever, she's also very thin, and she got beat up a lot. Now, you know, 
the Final Four ends and she wins the national championship as an MVP, where could she go from there? If she does the same exact thing she did last year, is that going to be good enough? I don't know. I don't know. Is she the best player in the country? I bet you if you polled the other three, 365, whatever, Division One schools, and no disrespect to any other player, and you asked any coach there, if there's one player they could take in America right now, who would it be? I think she would be on most everybody's list. Last question. Um, of course, uh, as you know from firsthand experience, uh, there's tremendous interest in women's basketball in, in the state of Connecticut, but you're, you're from a state and uh, that uh, it's, it's hard to describe how important basketball is in the state of Kentucky. There are certain states, Connecticut, Indiana, North Carolina, being a few where it's really important, but it's really important in Kentucky. Uh, it, it's, it's part of the culture and you know that better than anyone because you're from Kentucky and then you, you, know, you, you, you coached elsewhere and then you came back and you're now the head coach at Louisville. Can you talk a little bit about the culture and how basketball is just such a huge part of, of living in, in your state? Well, it is. I mean, and we're, we're fortunate to not have any pro sports teams. So ba basketball is our version of a pro professional sports team, both, you know, at Louisville and at, U at UK. Uh, you know, for both our women's programs, we average close to 10,000 uh, 10, a night. I think they draw between six and 7,000 a night. So, I mean, it, it speaks volumes for the, for, for the passion that there is for women's basketball in our state. Um, you know, we have to continue, as I tell our players every night, we have to continue to do our job and put a product on the floor that the fans want to come watch. Because you can win games, but if you're winning them 47 to 45, it, it's hard to bring people and have them want to continue to come out. So, you know, we're trying to play an entertaining style of, of, of basketball at the same time making sure we win basketball games. And I, and I think it's shown, I mean, what you, you, UConn's done up here with uh, the way G, Gino's developed his program over, over the years. Uh, you know, every night when you come, when you come to a game, it, it, it's entertaining. His kids play hard. They're, they're well prepared. And that's why their fans continue to come back. I mean, I look at our media day here, and when Bria Hartley is a preseason honorable mention all-conference, I just wonder what everybody looks at, <laughs> unless there's a rule that you can't have all five of them on all-conference team. I mean, it's just amazing to me that a kid like that is just honorable mention. You know, in any other league, and in our league, she should be preseason all-conference. But it just shows you, if, if you continue to put a good product on the floor, P, P, people will come out and watch. Well, guys, thanks, thanks very much for joining. And if he shows up at your restaurant, how about picking up the check? Uh, one app for free. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> We're joined by two juniors on the University of Louisville team. To my left is Sarah Hammond, and to my right is Bria Smith. And uh, Sarah, let me begin with you. You are uh, the first McDonald's All-American, not only uh, to play at Louisville, but to come out of the state of Kentucky. Uh, Tell us about your decision. You were very heavily recruited about your decision to stay at home in Kentucky and to play basketball at Louisville and not to go to the University of Kentucky. <laughs> um, yeah, it was all just wanting to be close with my family and uh, building the relationship that I had with Coach Walls and the program that he was building at the time at Louisville. Um, everything just fit in perfectly. The facilities at the KFC Yum Center, um, the academics at Louisville, and being close to my family were probably the three main decisions and uh, just the relationship that I built with Coach Walls and the team. And um, as you can tell, I'm glad I've met the decision that I made and um, just content the continued success that Louisville's had. Now, Bria, uh, last year I had the chance to do, uh, I think it was your conference opener at DePaul very early in the season. You lost a, a tough game on a Saturday mm -hmm. afternoon. And your team was so beat up by injuries back then. Yeah. And, uh, and then you, you, you fast forward and you beat Baylor in the Sweet 16. You go all the way to the NCAA championship game. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what it was like to, as a team to try to endure those injuries? You lost a couple of players for the entire season and to just stay together. And, of course, you were rewarded in the end. Um, I think that it's just the mentality that we take from Coach Walls. We have to deal with what we are given. So having those injuries, yeah, it was bad at the time, but you have to look past it. You have to just work with what you have. So we worked with what we had, and we had a great great run. And um, we just, I'm just looking forward to um, this season coming up, having everybody pretty much come back. We have Sharon Bales that's tore her ACL, but everybody's pretty much coming back now. Let's, uh, let's think back to last Easter Sunday night when, you, <laughs> when, when you're taking on Baylor, a team that uh, was the defending national champion, was everyone's pick to win it all again. They have this 
unprecedented force in the middle in Brittany Griner, and you guys beat them. And uh, it's, it's phenomenal how well you played that night. And, and you were hitting three pointers. You hit one. You practically fell into Coach Walls's lap. You were almost standing on the sideline. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what a what an emotional and uh, and wonderful experience that night was? Oh, I mean, like you said, we were kind of up against the giant with Brittany Griner and how she's evolved the game in women's basketball. And, um, of course, they're the, def the defending national champions. And um, no one gave us a chance that night except um, those people in the Louisville locker room before our game. And um, just like you said, everyone was hitting that night. And that was our game plan was to shoot threes. Don't drive into the post because, you know, obviously Brittany Griner's going to block it. Um, and I think we all thought by the time the posts were hitting threes that it was just our night. And um, we were thankful and, and honored to have that win and to represent our university and, and the city of Louisville. Um, it was just a great experience and um, kind of a historical piece um, in women's basketball that we'll forever be a part of. Bria, tell us uh, what it's like to play uh, with, with Shoni Schimmel. She's a, sort of a magician with the basketball, <laughs> and you really need to keep your eyes on her. I mean, have you ever been the recipient of one of her passes when you weren't looking? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think all of us have been a recipient of her passes, but I think it's just great. It brings excitement to the game. Um, we all like playing with her, and I think we all feed off of the excitement, so it's just it's a wonderful experience. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and I uh, hope you both have a, have a great uh, junior year. Thank, thank you. you. We're joined by Louisville senior guard Shoni Schimmel, and Shoni, you're uh, in a unique situation. Uh, when you were in high school, you played on uh, a Native American reservation in Oregon, and the head coach was your mom, and the assistant coach was your dad. Tell us what it was like to, uh, to be in that situation. Um, I mean, it was a lot of fun, you know, being able to play for my mom and dad just because, you know, I, I get both different views on it, you know, parent and coaching views. So, I mean, you know, to be able to play for both of them, it was, it was pretty exciting. So there were some rough times, but more better than worse. And then, uh, of course, you also played with your sister Jude, and she uh, was a teammate of yours on the Louisville team as well. Uh, what has it been like to, to be able to play with your sister for so many years during your career? It's been a lot of fun, you know. I mean, we, we kind of know each other, what we're going to do and whatnot. And so you, you, you've seen throughout the years, you know, that she, she knows what I'm going to do before I even do it. And so, like, during the cow game, I threw it behind the back pass. I said, did you know that was coming? She said, yes, I did. And I was like, oh, okay. So we know each other pretty well when it comes to the basketball court, and even off the court, you know. And so it's great being able to play with your sister. I've had many conversations with your coach, Jeff Walls, about the recruiting process and how uh, I know you and your family felt that he should be rewarded for his efforts because he really recruited you harder than anyone else, and, and, he, sta and he stayed with you. And I'm sure he... Uh, he painted a vision of what Louisville basketball could be like. Since you've come there, they, they've opened up this magnificent arena. Uh, the attendance is, is unbelievable among the leading drawing teams in the country. And then last year, uh, you, didn't, you, you didn't win at all. You went to the NCAA Finals, but you beat Baylor in the Sweet 16, defending national champ with Brittany Griner. Can you try to put into words how magical that night was? Uh, no, to be honest with you, you know, I mean, it's just so crazy how it all happened, you know, and so for it to go down the way it went down, it was, it was just crazy, you know, unbelievable, it's something we're going to remember for the rest of our lives, and, you know, it's very special, especially with the group of people that we did it with, and so, um, you know, to be able to go out there and be the returning champs, it's, you know, it's kind of crazy, but, you know, it was, it was exciting, it was a lot of fun, and it's something, you know, we're going to remember forever. Well, thanks for joining us, and hope you have a great senior year.